Hey guys, now you can follow me on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash ultramaximusreviews. <laughs>
Captain America down into the water. I mean, it, it literally was a straight ripoff of that, which was a bit disappointing. I expected a little bit more, but uh, at least she kicked ass, I suppose. And I thought Ares could have been better, too. I just I didn't care for that too terribly much. But eh, it is what it is, and at least we got to see her again in Justice League. My number eight pick is going to go to Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Now, for the most part, I really like this movie. It was a little bit different take, but kind of the same. We go back to Pirate Ghosts, which I really kind of like. Um, we get pretty much a new crew that Captain Jack Sparrow deals with. I liked Paul McCartney's cameo in it. And, um, I, you know, I, I, it's... It was interesting, uh, that's for sure. I liked Barbosa's role in it. Um, the whole privateer kind of thing was cool. The visuals were looking good. Uh, but the actors are starting to get on in age, uh, you can tell. And uh, I, I really enjoyed the film all the way up to the very end. And unfortunately, the whole Barbosa and the girl storyline just kind of, eh, it seemed to meh. I like Barbosa as the gruff, er, pirate captain. Don't humanize him to me. And that was probably the biggest thing I had against the movie. Other than that, everything else was really, really fun. And you can't go wrong with a good pirates film. It's not the best in the series, but it's definitely not the worst, and it's better than the last couple films we've gotten in the franchise. My number seven pick is going to go to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, when the first film came out, it was a surprise hit, and it was one of those movies I knew walking in, I'm either going to love it or I'm going to hate it. Absolutely adored the film. Uh, this one, I knew it wasn't going to be as good as the first one, and, well, it met expectation. While it was entertaining, it just wasn't as good as the first one, and even though this film franchise is going to revolve around a lot of humor, this one seemed to push it a little too much. Um, I, I like Mantis. I liked her inclusion. Ego storyline was okay. Um, it just, I don't know. There was something that was missing in it, and I, I'm not sure what it was. It just didn't have the same kind of punch that the first one did. Maybe it seemed a little bit rushed. Um, but overall, I mean, it was a pretty decent popcorn movie and a pretty decent sequel. My number six pick is going to go to Star Wars The Last Jedi, which I just saw last night. Well, at the time of the recording, anyway. Um, I was not as impressed with this film as I was Rogue One or The Force Awakens. And I knew that going into it, uh, the trailers just didn't grab me like the trailers for those films did. And um, I knew it wasn't going to be as good. Uh, my biggest issues with the film, it was way too jokey and too modern jokey. Um, I didn't like that. And there were some really huge jump the shark moments in the film that I was just like, ugh, man, really? Especially with like Leia. Um, I don't know. And, and it just, it just seemed a little too convenient for places. It seemed like they were missing parts of the script, um, some plot holes in it and, uh, uh, some bad CG work with Snoke. Uh, I, I gotta say, uh, just, ugh, not, not good. That being said, it was a really good character development movie. I loved Luke Skywalker. I knew going into it, he wasn't going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was pretty much going to be a hot mess, and that's that's what we got. And I liked it. Um, it humanized the character, and um, I, you know I appreciated that, because that is a character uh, I, I wanted to see humanized. And it goes to that whole, your heroes and idols aren't what you expect them to be. Um, you know, they're human too. And I thought that was really, really good. And we get a really great cameo in the film that sort of smacks him around and says hey yeah remember you're doing the same stuff you did then so uh wake up you're you're not uh you know obi-wan you're luke skywalker and i see where they were going with it setting things up but this is definitely not the empire strikes back um you know i think it was a, a little forced a little rushed and uh and it's just not as good as the other ones and uh, you know it wasn't bad but it wasn't great i gave this a c um, I think Rogue One and Force Awakens, like I said, were better films. This is better than the prequel films, though. I will give it that. 
entering in the top five is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming, which is a bit of a surprise to me. I really didn't have much expectation of this film and thought this could be a big bomb, and I really enjoyed it. I liked Spider-Man as a teenager. I always have because when I was a kid, that's who he was. He was a high school student. And uh, they nailed that with uh, Tom Holland. Uh, I like the interaction with the Marvel Avengers teams from the Disney films. Uh, very, very good. I liked how they fixed the film and the little uh, uh, mixed girl was not Mary Jane. It's a totally different character. Um, so that was cool. And uh, it just, I don't know. And, and there were two characters. They were both uh, minority type characters that I thought in the trailer were the same girl. Uh, but they're two completely different characters. And uh, uh, one of them really, really funny and a really huge surprise out of Michael Keaton. Not in his acting ability, but the, the character development, uh, which was really, really nice. Keaton did a great bad guy. Um, no surprise there. Uh, everything was just really, really fun. It was fresh. It was different. It was a great take on Spider-Man, and I look forward to the this incarnation of the character in the upcoming Avengers films and upcoming Spider-Man movies. My number four pick is going to go to Logan. This, of course, is the third standalone Wolverine movie from the X-Men franchise, and it's Hugh Jackman's final go at Wolverine as uh, the character in a full film. And uh, this was great. I liked it. It was very loosely based off of Old Man Logan, uh, mainly in the fact that he's old and uh, grumpy, and he's on a road trip across the country um, with a fellow mutant and uh, trying to you know, go on one last adventure kind of thing, reluctantly. And uh, that's really about it. Everything else is completely different. Patrick Stewart comes back as an old and uh, dementia-ridden Professor X, which is awesome. We get X-23, very different than what we get in the comics, but uh, uh, acceptable. I liked her. I thought she did a good job. Um, I, you know, I liked all the characters. I thought it was a really interesting and well done uh, version of the movie. It's rated R, which is nice. We get to see Wolverine actually unleash. I liked the meta feel with the comics in it. Uh, it was a good touch. Uh, and the toys, and uh, uh, an, an interesting storyline that seems familiar. I can't remember if it's an actual comic storyline that they loosely took off of. I want to say it is, but uh, it's a great movie and a nice swan song uh, to Wolverine by Hugh Jackman. And uh, the black and white uh, film noir version looked good, too. I mean, it was the same film in black and white, and it's good. I liked it. It was a nice, dark, fitting end for Wolverine, and it's going to be interesting to see who fills his shoes uh, with the character next. My number three pick is going to go to Justice League. Now, this is one of those films you loved it or hated it. I liked it. I thought it was really fun, really entertaining. And, of course, tons of Marvel fanboys just trash this thing like they always do and circle jerk around all the Marvel movies. Well, this was a fun movie. I really did like it. Um, I like Marvel movies, but this was just as good to me. I loved Aquaman. I thought the actor was really good. There's a great scene with Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Cyborg looked a little too CG-ish to me. I wish they had more practical effects uh, with that character, I think a more RoboCop look would have been better, but eh, I didn't direct the movie. Uh, Flash loved him a lot more than I thought it was going to, but uh, he nailed the character down really, really well. And I like the Batfleck. I do. I, I really do. Um, Steppenwolf was a little too much CG uh, for my taste, uh, kind of a la Snoke in uh, the Star Wars film, but uh, eh, it worked, and uh, they kind of set up uh, Darkseid, but I wanted to see Darkseid. We didn't get to see him in the movie, but I will say we knew Superman was coming back, and it was kind of a, a rebirth of Superman type of film, uh, uh, all of the comics in the 90s, uh, although drastically different here. And, uh, you know, I wanted to see Darkseid. I really, really did, but we'll see him at some point. And um, I gotta say, this film really shows you how powerful Superman is when he first come back, uh, he, when he first comes back. And, and, and I, I, I gotta say, that was probably the best part of the whole movie. I loved that scene.
Now, there's rumors that once the Justice League movies are done, that uh, Ben Affleck will not be reprising his role as Batman, which I hope that's not the case, because I like him as Batman. I think he works. Uh, but there's also rumor that uh, the Flashpoint movie with uh, the kid that's playing Flash here is going to use... Uh, man, I can't think of his name. The guy plays Negan, and he played uh, the comedian in uh, The Watchmen, uh, Negan off The Walking Dead, and he also played Thomas Wayne in Batman vs. Superman. Um, he said to play the Earth 2 Batman that we get in the comics, where uh, it's Thomas Wayne as Batman, and I really hope that's the case, because that will be bad. Ass. I can't wait for that uh, if that comes through. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But overall, this was relatively fast-paced. Uh, it was fun. It had good comedy, good action, and uh, I, I think one of the better DC movies we've gotten in a while. My number two pick is going to go to Thor Ragnarok. I knew this movie was going to be fun from the onset. I love the 80s type theme and the music, the score, the look. Um, it kind of wraps up the whole Thor franchise, standalone films, and it kind of makes its own uh, World War Hulk uh, vibe to it, which is really nice. We get Gladiator Hulk, um, Thor. I mean, it just, I mean, uh, hella fantastic Kate Blanchett does such a great job as Hela. I wanted more of that character and I really hope she is the death that uh, Thanos falls in love with uh, but uh, god he looks horrible in Infinity War. I don't know what they did. They had him right in all the little uh, trailer bits up to it but uh, now he's out and about he looks like a wrestler in a wife beater. It just That looks bad. But this was a really good movie. Loved Hulk. Loved the interaction with him and Thor. A Valkyrie was awesome. Uh, that actress did a great job. I liked Loki. Um, I didn't care for him in the last bits that we saw him in, but uh, uh, he did a great job here, and I really, really liked it. Uh, this was probably the best of the Thor films. Loved Doctor Strange's cameo in it. Um, set up really, really well for um, Infinity War when we see him in there, and Thor with his eye patch losing his hammer. Uh, very good stuff, really liked it, and it kind of a parallel of Beta Ray Bill, if you go back and read the comics on how Beta Ray Bill came about, which is interesting. We get a, a kind of a cameo of his head on um, the War Planet, which was neat. Love Jeff Goldblum, um, the Grandmaster, very nice, uh, very well done. Love the Kirby nod uh, there in the whole arena. Just an all-around fun, fun film, and that's why it's number two. And my number one pick for top movie of 2017 has got to go to Blade Runner 2049. To be honest, I really didn't know what to expect when I walked into this movie, but I walked out so satisfied. Probably one of the best films I have watched in years. And when I say film, I mean film. This was not a popcorn movie. This was a film that they're going to watch in uh, theater classes or movie classes, cinema classes in colleges for years to come. It's going to be a cult favorite. I guarantee it. Uh, the visuals were amazing. The story was pretty good. Um, it wasn't the all-round, I can't say 100%, one of the best stories out there, but it was good. It had the proper twists. I thought, I'm like, really? Are you going to dumb us down like that? And then it took an interesting twist. I enjoyed it. Um, I think Harrison Ford's character was an interesting uh, way to go with him. And uh, they still didn't really answer if Decker was a human or if he was... Uh, one of the replicants, which was nice. Um, the visuals, oh, the visuals were so amazing. Uh, we see different parts of that world, and they were all very interesting. Uh, we got to see some uh, uh, parts from the uh, original film come back, which were nice. The sound, the sound in this movie, just amazing. From the music to the sound effects, um, just blew me away. And was such an, uh, an integrated part of the film. Um, I, I just cannot give enough praises to this movie. I got out, I started chatting with my buddy in Los Angeles about it. I think we talked about it for two days. Um, I, you know, I went to see it twice in the theater and, um, wow, I just got to say great job, absolute great job, uh, making this film to the director and producers. Um, we just don't see cinema like this. Um, anymore, and unfortunately, I know it's not going to get a lot of fanfare um, out of the critics, 
Um, this was really kind of geared to a niche, uh, uh, you know, fan base, which is a bit unfortunate, but the fans I know are going to appreciate it. Uh, actual film buffs are going to like this movie, and it's going to get snubbed at the Oscars. I, I, I know it is. But it was the best movie of 2017, if not the best film out in a long, long while. So there it is, my top 10 movies for 2017. What did you guys think of this list? What were your favorite movies? Leave a comment down below or join us over on my Facebook page and uh, engage in the conversation there. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this year, and I look forward to kicking off 2018 with each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs it up. If you hate this video, thumbs it down. To watch more Ultra Maximus, click on the links to the right. Don't forget to subscribe and share, like us on Facebook, and look for more videos in the future.